Okay, we're now recording, and I think we can kick things off. Nazir, would you like to open us? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure, definitely. Welcome, everyone, to the Presto Foundation Technical Steering Committee meeting, May 5. And today we have four agenda items. Uh, the first one is about our events, uh, Presto events. Uh, the first one around the, the virtual Presto meetup that we had around two weeks ago. And the other one is about our plans for the first PrestoCon that was canceled due to, that was postponed due to the COVID situation. The second agenda item is around the uh, PR number 43, which is the basic policies <clears throat> that are added to the README. The third item is around PR 46, which is some additional policies and procedures around the TSC governance. And the final item is about the <clears throat> cadence of this TSC meeting. So let's start with the first one. And I also see like Jinsha joining. So we now have the majority. Okay. So <clears throat> we now have the quorum. So let's, let's start with the first one. Amit, uh, yep. can, can you please give an overview of the virtual press or meetup event? Maybe some, you know, interesting observations, some numbers, and also uh, give us an, an update about the press or compliance, please. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Nessie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so a quick uh, update from the event that we had. Uh, as you know, because of the current situation, we are unable to basically do any kind of in-person meetup for a foreseeable future. So we decided to explore if an online meetup would basically work as a good substitute. So we had uh, three speakers, uh, you know, from Facebook and Uber about uh, 10 days back. Uh, present on three different topics and we used our existing meetup group to promote this event. Uh, we had a pleasingly good response. Uh, you know, over 150 people did sign up and at peak, I remember seeing about 108 people attending pretty much sitting through the entire event. So given, you know, as an experiment, I think this went really well. So we have been discussing in the outreach team to make this into a fairly regular monthly cadence. And you'll be seeing a call for request for two more speakers going out for our uh, May end, end of May event. So I love to you know, get your support and uh, you know, we look forward to getting two speakers from this pool or people that you can recommend who can you know, do a, a quick online meetup for us. So that went well. Uh, at the same time, you also know we had uh, been planning our large PrestoCon event, which was supposed to be essentially our big go-to go -to party and you know, announcing to the world what we are doing, our roadmap. Um, but that got canceled as well. We were waiting for the last few weeks to see if the situation may become normal and we could consider another in-person meetup. But as per the new guidelines we are getting from Facebook and perhaps other companies as well, uh, PrestoCon in person does not look feasible again for this year. So with the help of Linux Foundation, we are now exploring an online platform to basically take PrestoCon online. Uh, they had, uh, you know, a couple of days back shared with us a number of options on how we can host um, PrestoCon as a virtual event. And we are going through a bit of pros and cons of each of these platforms to make a decision, as well as evaluating certain dates, uh, you know, that have been floated around. Uh, we could do that as early as, um, you know, July, uh, middle of July, to another date that was floated out was perhaps doing it in September, which is, uh, you know, also one year off the foundation, uh, uh, forming of the Presto Foundation. So a, a consensus hasn't been reached, but hopefully in the next outreach meeting, uh, we will be able to agree upon a date and uh, you know, give ourselves enough time so that we are well prepared um, and can run this event virtually. I would love to hear if somebody has any specific thoughts about you know, uh, what we are doing with the meetups and PrestoCon uh, that we can take back to the outreach and have a discussion around that. Thanks, Amit. Any any okay. questions or comments for Amit around these events? Okay. 
Okay. okay Nessie, I have Nessie, I want to add yeah. one more point. Uh, Definitely. You know, not so much related to the events, but mm -hmm. uh, an interesting opportunity that the Facebook open source team has been exploring. Um, a couple of months back, if you remember, we had some discussion about, you know, uh, could Presto be part of the Google Summer of Code, which essentially what it does is gets um, people working on tasks that the open source team has created on a certain project and, um, you know, basically get a lot of people to start supporting those projects. Now, when we discussed that, it looked like it's going to be a fairly significant overhead in terms of having somebody to, you know, monitor and watch what is going on. But recently we did a partnership, and this was actually just yesterday, between GitHub, Ourself, and uh, Major League Hacking. Uh, this is a company that is running a very similar program. It's a 12-week paid internship program, and uh, our team is a sponsor of that. And what we are doing is looking for open source projects where we can put these interns to work on a specific task or a set of tasks. The, the big difference between this and the Google uh, Summer of Code is that this program, A, also pays people. So people who actually sign up for this get paid internships. Plus, they also actually include a mentor as part of this package. So there'll be a dedicated mentor for these group of interns working on a project that mentor also gets paid, which is kind of nice. So, you know, it becomes like a full-time task for them. And the project teams do have a say in picking and selecting who the mentor should be. So they've, they've really ironed up this model really well and opening this up as a virtual internship opportunity, given so many companies have canceled, you know, internships this year. I thought I'll at least bring it up to the TSC to see if you know this could be of value to our project as well and i'll obviously share more details in email uh, you know after this call but i just wanted to call that out and love to see if we can you know consider you know sponsoring or you know at least you know backing this particular project uh, for presto so i'll send more details out you know after after this yeah definitely this sounds very interesting so thank yeah. you thank you very much for sharing so any, any questions or comments for Amit before we, we move on to the next item? Okay, so let's move on. The next item is about PR number 43. So Brian, you want to provide some context on this? Sure, so uh, these are the 43 and 46 are the two PRs that we've had open for a while. Uh, these are the, you know, um, policies and procedures, the things which were left deliberately ambiguous in the technical charter, which the TSC can then you know, define around uh, whatever processes make sense for them given the project. And uh, today, what I was hoping we could do was maybe review and figure out if there are any last remaining questions or concerns. Um, ideally, since we have quorum, it would be nice to vote on one or both of these. Uh, if not, then we can defer it to an email vote. So uh, just maybe running down through uh, the history here, we had discussed uh, a variety of the different options. There were a number of things which had come up in the past which have been added. One of the examples is uh, quorum requirements. Uh, we discussed making sure that, uh, you know, that the quorum requirements are set appropriately based upon attendance. And if somebody has deactivated who would otherwise count towards quorum, uh, that there's a, a threshold after which they no longer count towards quorum and it doesn't block making of decisions. One of the other things we discussed was initial term and how often new members should be coming onto the TSC and how often elections should run. Uh, the idea there was to make sure that when we uh, have an election and new people come on, we're not having such a large number of people you know, potentially being replaced that there would be brain drain. Uh, we think we addressed that by saying it's a three-year term and then roughly a third of the TSC is up for election each year. Um, one of the, I, I guess one of the questions which wasn't fully resolved, which Nezi and I had been discussing on the, the thread was how do we select, at least initially, uh, who is up for election, whose seat is up for election next year and the year after? Because we're starting this up now, can't have everybody on a three-year cycle because then we'll be replacing potentially the entire TSC or every TSC seat will be up for, for voting at the same time. So one of the options is to allow people to say, you know, self-nominate and say, I, you know, I'm willing to sit for a one-year term and then put my seat up for election. Um, 
obviously they can run for that seat again. Uh, the other way to do it is just randomly say there's a certain number, you know, put together a spreadsheet and with everybody's name next to it and then decide uh, randomly who is going to be, um, you know, one year or two year or three year initial term. Of course, once we've done that, then the seat is a three year seat um, after that initial period. So I think that one's that, that may still be an open, um, although that's more of the mechanics of the process of deciding how to stagger out the seats. And then the last thing that we had that was uh, an open was determining eligibility. And this was uh, you know, determining whether or not a uh, person needs to be a committer in the Presto project uh, in order to be uh, eligible for a TSC seat. And we, in the last meeting, last few meetings, we had discussed that uh, it, maybe this could be loosened a little bit as long as we had a reasonable set of criteria in a reasonable nomination form to collect information from candidates uh, where they could express ways in which they have contributed to the community that might not be reflected in having a committership on the project. So I pushed, um, I pushed a template yesterday. Rebecca, uh, I saw that you had commented on this. Thank you. Um, and there are, uh, I think that, that really concludes the last open question. Did I miss anything? Does anybody have any other concerns that, uh, that we haven't addressed so far with these policies? Okay, um, so I guess I would ask, is there anything that I can provide here or would it help to do a run through of these documents one more time? Um, are there any concerns about voting? Would, would we like to review anything? I'm trying to strike a balance here between, you know, keeping these open for, for review time, but also getting to the point of running a vote so we can declare them done and <laughs> move on. So I have a question, like regarding the uh, statement, like initially the TSC shall randomly designate one third of the seats to be one year terms, whatever, there, should, there will be some two year terms, et cetera. So we talked about randomizing and uh, selecting one third in some way with some process. Mm -hmm. So at that point, like, so that means, let's say we have 10 committers, like three of them will be up for re-election. Mm -hmm. And let's say, like we like, we, like two questions here. One is, so can these people who are up for re-election be nominated again? Absolutely. Yep, is absolutely. It, is, it, is it clear in this document? I think we made it clear. And if not, I can okay. definitely make it clear. Uh, okay, and the second one is, <clears throat> let's say, <clears throat> sorry, let's say some of these committers that are up for re-election said like, I don't want to be reelected. Mm -hmm. So at that point, like, I think what is gonna happen is like, they will still have committer access, so they should still be committers, mm -hmm. but they are not on TSC, right? Yes. Then this means we have made the, we have basically made a distinction between a committer and the TSC member, which we, have, we haven't made so far. So that, that will be some difference we will have. Because we've never, so far, we've never thought about that. Like, we didn't make any distinction between committers and TSCs, but with this change, we will also make that distinction at some point. Yep, that's correct. Um, and, and I just uh, pasted into chat that uh, under term of TSC voting members, we have text in there that says there's no limit to the number of times an individual may run for an open seat. Uh, yeah. And then, I mean, we certainly could put something in here and say that if a if a TSC voting member who's a committer is no longer on the TSC, they retain their, their committer rights. Yeah. Any, any, any questions or comments from the TSC about the PR43? Like there's, there's plenty of items here. It would be good to, you know, get the questions right now and save some discussion. And I guess that the, the self-domination form is pretty recent. Brian added recently. So if any questions about that, it would be good to bring up. If it would help, I can share my screen here and just walk you through the self-nomination form. Yeah. yeah. Um, give me one second. Uh, 
Okay, uh, so up on the screen, this is the self-nomination form. And there are a couple of things to be aware of here. Uh, one is that um, I defined a, a basic process here for what the self-nomination would look like. Um, for each election, I'm, I've been thinking of these in terms of classes. So there's a class of 2021 who had served from 2021 to 2024. There's a class of 2022 who had served from 2022 until 2025. Um, the idea would be each year we create a new folder underneath the, uh, the nominations directory that contains all of the text file nominations for people who are you know, interested in, in uh, sitting in that, sitting in a seat. And so um, the hope here is to have uh, a track record where we can see, and, and when uh, time comes to the election, we can point to all the different nomination files. And uh, what I'm suggesting here is that when somebody wants to nominate themselves, they would just copy and paste this template right here into a new file and then answer the questions. Uh, recent leadership contributions would be areas where you know, somebody has made some sort of a contribution to leadership of the Presto community. Uh, this could include things like being a committer, or it could be you know, leading some sort of an initiative uh, on the TSC, even if you weren't a member, or participating on the governing board or something like that. Uh, I think we also should capture recent technical contributions. Um, so essentially very quick, uh, quick summarization of the things which you have done within the technical community. Um, examples could be features you've developed or documentation or test coverage uh, that you've enhanced or something like that. We had also discussed as well, there can be times when somebody's contribution may not be technical, but it may be non-technical. And they may provide a perspective or a viewpoint which is not currently you know, covered within the, the TSC membership and it may be useful to have them there. Um, so there may be non-technical factors which should be cons uh, considered here. So that could be, um, you know, if you have a specific area of expertise or a specific industry affiliation that is relevant to the things which the TSC is addressing, it's something that should come out in the nomination form. Um, there's also a forward-looking statement on what you hope to achieve in your term on the TSC, uh, and as well, just a, a catch-all at the end of this, which is, you know, what else should uh, the members consider when they're considering your nomination. And I am putting length requirements on these six sentences or less, 12 sentences or less, uh, so that it's you know, reasonably easy to parse through these. Does anybody have any questions about this? Did I miss anything? So maybe I can ask a question. So there was some discussion in the past weeks about <clears throat> so the, the TSC member candidate, whether they should have uh, code contributions and mm -hmm. technical expertise with Presto. I guess uh, several TSC members wanted, as a per, wanted that as a prerequisite. So should we have a section in the self-nomination page the, the template has some technical contribution part but like in the self-nomination page about some of these prerequisites so that we maybe do early filtering out mm -hmm. sure you could say um generally the ideal candidate would have uh, a track record of technical contribution yeah something like that just to clarify yeah. the basic expectations uh that's right Hi, this is Sabine Sain from Aluxio. Uh, just one question, a simple question. Uh, do we, uh, are we working on the, for example, what's the differentiation between the committer and the TSC member? Uh, because previously you briefly mentioned about this. I just want to see if there's any documentation that can look through. So what we're working on right now, um, originally, well, actually, let me, let me take a trip back here <laughs> uh, to give the full context. So the way that the technical charter is written, it defines the initial membership of the TSC as being the committers. And the idea is that this allows the TSC to bootstrap itself. And then it also leaves open that the TSC can determine uh, for the future, once it's been formed, how the 
uh, who, who is eligible and how TSC members are selected. In some projects, they choose to say, okay, it'll just be the committers of the project. And we'll just leave it at that and we'll keep it simple. Um, other projects will say, we'd like to have, in addition to the committers of the project, or, or separately from the committers of the project, we'd like to be able to have other people be on the TSC as there may be some perspective which is brought by doing that. Uh, you know, it may be that somebody has a certain industry perspective, it may be that somebody has a certain technical perspective that is uh, not related to, the, to the, this project in particular, but is related to something which is important. Um, and the whole point here the, to kind of bring, in, bring it all full circle is that the TSC can essentially use its own discretion in determining who is eligible to be a TSC member. It's just important to have it documented and consistent. And so what we're working on here is just making sure that when, um, when anybody fills out a self-nomination to be on the TSC, whether it's a committer or whether it's somebody with non-technical but relevant experience, uh, that they are all being considered equally using the same set of questions and criteria. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Maybe I was just a little bit confused or uh, by the term committer. Do we here mean someone who ever contributed any code to the source code repository or uh, this is another election process called committer, you know, like for Apache project, there is some such a process. Ah, good question. So yes, committer is a defined term. <laughs> it's a capital C committer uh, where the Presto project decides amongst itself who has uh, decision-making rights as to what code can be applied. So we would consider somebody who's written code and opened up a PR, that person would be a contributor in the terminology that we're using here. The person who actually merges the PR and has the rights to merge the PR would be the committer. So those are the, the distinctions, contributor yeah. versus committer. Thanks. Yep. And to add to that, like, <clears throat> so the Presto project has some committer guidelines on the GitHub wiki pages, you can take a look at that to see what the what makes a contributor committer. And the other thing that you can check is in the charter. It the, the, there is there are some statements about the procedure of electing a new committer and how you need a majority of the vote of existing committers, etc. So there's some information bits there as well regarding committership. Thank you. So. Coming back to this self-nomination document, any, any questions for Brian or any comments about this self-nomination form or maybe PR43 in general? Would there be any concerns with taking a vote to land this today? We can iterate on the on the nomination template since that's we're not going to need that until later on this year. Um, but as far as the rest of the policies, um, everything's discussed here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, having the the list of collaboration tools, the members, the the terms of the TSC voting members, um, how to become a member, eligibility. Voting sounds good. Okay, thank you, Rebecca. This, this wasn't a formal vote, by the way, <laughs> but, but thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll call that separately. I just wanted to make sure. So uh, Rebecca's good with it. Anybody else have any concerns with moving forward on a vote on this? Okay. Not Wait, anything. I just have a question about this vote. Sure. Um, so because it's a regular vote, does that mean there's like one Facebook representative who's voting because of the one, whatever that requirement? Yep, that's right. So um, it's one vote per company if there are less than six companies represented as voting members. So the voting members or companies represented as voting members are Facebook, Twitter, and Uber. Okay. Yeah. So with that though, like maybe it may be better if we take it offline then because we are missing many commenters from the Facebook side. It would be good to capture their opinion and then come up with that single vote for Facebook. Okay, sounds good. Um, 
I will take an action to send yeah. that email right after the meeting. Yes. Yeah. I will also follow up with the commenters to make okay. sure that we have something out of this discussion. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, which that should bring us to the next topic, which is uh, PR number 46, which is effectively the same thing, but there haven't really been any discussions on this one that I'm aware of. Um, I think this one's been pretty stable. This is the one that includes information on um, you know making decisions, and it includes a, a section on... Um, you know, some policy on, on how to merge PRs against the TSC repository. And these are uh, some guidelines which we've used in other projects which have worked reasonably well, which is where if there's a change to something, uh, a change to a policy that the, uh, the TSC has, uh, has developed, where you know, a PR would remain open for a certain period of time, there's time for people to object, um, you know, things can be fast-tracked if it's something which is you know, reasonably, uh, reasonably trivial or which the TSC members have said this is okay in a meeting. But basically what this avoids is a situation where somebody, you know, opens a PR to change a, a policy and then it just kind of goes through <laughs> without, without others having a chance to weigh in. Um, so that's in here under merging PRs into the TSC repository. And then there's just general stuff um, in here about, you know, links off to the IP policy, notes on SPDX, uh, short form identifiers, copyright notices, et cetera. Anybody have a question about this one? All right. I'm not hearing any, so um, I think I will send out this one uh, for a vote as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's uh, that's everything that I had, Nessie. Yeah. To you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. So okay. Yeah. So moving to the last item uh, about the cadence of the TSC meetings. This meeting. So Gail, you want to provide context on this one? Sure. Thanks, Nezi. Um, when we initially began meeting as a TSC in December, it was proposed that we meet on a biweekly or twice monthly basis during the initial bootstrapping period, um, as there were more topics to discuss and uh, more action items to stand up um, the organization. Now that we've been together for several months now, it was uh, discussed or asked if we should move to a monthly cadence instead of meeting every two weeks, um, just to give us more time to pull together content and uh, kind of use, make more valuable use of your time. Are there any questions around that in the group? And Brian, is this something that we would need to have a complete vote on or how would we move, move forward with this one? Consensus is fine. If there are okay. no objections to moving to monthly, we can just move this to monthly. Okay. Um, are there any objections to moving to a monthly meeting? Okay, uh, then Brian, I'll take action to update the series. So we'll start meeting on a monthly basis every four weeks instead of every two weeks. Excellent. Thanks. Okay, so this concludes the items in the agenda. So before wrapping up, are there any other topics that anyone wants to bring up or any other questions or comments around any of these items that we have been through today? Uh, I have one thing. So this is Jane Xiao from Twitter. Um, I think now we are about to separate the TSC and committer. So for TSC, uh, some of the things uh, it's nice. We think about it and uh, make it clear, for example, in Apache community, whether TSC can determine uh, who is committer or revoke the committership, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, all these things. Um, we already have some documentation. I think it would be nice. Uh, we make sure all the things are clear. So 
So Jinshao, can you maybe like, it would be good if you can add some of these details as a comment to the PR 43, I guess, that would be really good to capture it on the PR. So that maybe uh -huh. we can extend yeah. the PR. Sure. Yeah, this be good. will be like a follow-up uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so that I get the, <laughs> the order of operations correct here, or is this something which we can land the PR as it is right now and then refine this, or would you like to have this in place before we land the PR? Oh, we can land the PR. That's okay. good. Yeah, this is just for a suggestion for following topics. Okay, sounds good. So basically your comment is mostly around the, the separation, like the responsibilities around TSC versus committers and yep. clearly defining them. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would definitely agree with that. Like given, if, if we decide to go that route of separating the two bodies, then we really need a crisp, crisp, crystal clear definition and the differences in responsibilities. That will, that will be very good to capture in some of these documents. That makes sense. Any other questions or comments before we wrap up about anything or any, any, any item that you want to bring up? Other than these items, um, uh, this is Dipti from Ahana. Um, I just wanted to say uh, hello. We recently joined the Presto Foundation, and um, I used to be a chair of the outreach committee. I'm starting to attend the TSC meetings now, um, and uh, great discussion today. So, just saying hello. Looking forward to working with the team. Yeah. Hey, Dipti. Yeah, welcome to the Presto Foundation. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Okay, all right, looks like we don't have additional questions. Okay, I see one chat message. Okay, we don't have any additional questions. So thanks everyone, thanks everyone for attending and, and the discussion and have a great rest of your day. Thank you all. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.